It's Tuesday, it's 5.30. I promised you a Dark Angels Codex preview and... This, this will do. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam. I am one half of DeploymentZone.tv and um, I'm really sorry to the Dark Angels players, but I don't have the Dark Angels preview codex. Um, we got an email the day after this, the last video went out on, um, on YouTube. We got an email from Games Workshop saying that our codex was on its way. It was winging its way to us from sunny Nottingham. And we are now on, as I film this, on Monday the 1st of February and it still hasn't arrived and I've had an apology from Games Workshop saying we're really sorry you don't have it yet, but I don't have it yet, so I, I can't, I, I don't have, I can't give you a preview of the Codex. Of course, there are some things we can touch on that were released on the community page before the pre-order date and I will refer you to my previous video, which is this side, isn't it? Is it this side? It's this side. Uh where I said that I really, really hope that Ravenwing units in an uh, Outrider detachment get objective secured, and they've done that, they get objective secured, and I really, really hope that, that the Deathwing units in a Vanguard detachment get objective secured, and they've done that. Just employ me, Games Workshop, just get me to do your rules for you, clearly, because I asked for two things, they've given us those two things, and I am so insanely happy that those things exist. Of course, there is more information that they have chucked out in those community articles about what the Deathwing and the Ravenwing get, and I'm super excited by it, and it looks like Inner Circle staying the same, which is really, really good. Um, we also know that Outriders from the Space Marine book get Ravenwing, and then when you put them in that Outrider detachment, if it's pure Ravenwing and they get Ravenwing, they gain the Jink keyword. In a second company detachment, they also gain the Objective Secured rules, and the HQ allows them to refund those three command points. That's the other thing I asked for. The same thing have happened with Deathwing. So if they get put in a first company detachment, which is a Vanguard detachment with pure Deathwing units in that detachment and they gain objective secured for Deathwing Terminators and they get to refund their three command points. Everything I asked for, Games Workshop gave it to us. That is incredible and the good news doesn't stop there. So what else am I referring to when I say the good news doesn't stop there? Well, there was another community article released today. Something else that both me and Winters have been screaming for for a long time now and again, they've listened. I'm starting to think they watch us. I'm starting to think they also might be subscribed to www.deploymentzone.tv because we've discussed this on our DZHQs on many occasion and now it seems to have happened. But they've also dropped the ball on this one a little bit and uh, it, it does annoy me ever so slightly. But I can live with it for now if it's not a permanent fix and that remains to be seen because in the past they've done this similar type of thing which I'll go on to in just a second it has in fact been the permanent fix and I'm hoping that's not the case but Games Workshop announced today on their community article that was released on the 1st of February that Maelstrom of War is coming back to 40k and Maelstrom of War will now be a way of playing 40k in 9th edition. Now I think most of us who aren't from the competitive scene or in the competitive environment or meta are super excited and happy about this because the 9th edition standard Eternal War mil uh, rule set has got maybe a little bit stale for a lot of people and it's become a bit mundane to play and dare I say perhaps even a little bit mundane to watch and Winters and I were looking at ways we can mix it up and we have the open war cards and you've probably seen him on DZTV using open war cards to play the missions uh, to play different uh, or a different variety of missions I haven't yet had a chance to use mine but from what I've seen him do I'm really excited by them and I actually almost thought about starting to film battle reports with the 8th edition Maelstrom of War cards but in 9th edition because I think it would kind of work. I don't think I don't think it would be too dissimilar to 8th edition in terms of how Maelstrom of War cards uh, Maelstrom of War cards work. So I thought about doing that. Don't have to. Games Workshop have released a version of Maelstrom for 9th edition 40k. At the moment we don't have any more information than that really apart from the fact that there's a number of Maelstrom missions. There are stratagems attached because there's a screenshot that shows you page such and such for stratagems page such and such of what I hear you ask how can I get my hands on this amazing Maelstrom of War pack for 9th edition 40k 
Well, that's the bit that, for me, sucks a little bit, and I, I don't love this, but they've done it, and I'm hoping, like I say, it's a temporary fix, but the only way you can get your hands on this version of Maelstrom of War is by buying White Dwarf, and I believe it's issue 461. I think that's the issue number for February. I think, because I've just been looking on the website, I'm sure 460 was January's uh, White Dwarf. So you have to buy White Dwarf, and the Maelstrom of War pack is only available in White Dwarf. Now, historically, Games Workshop have put rules out in White Dwarf, and they have remained in White Dwarf. And, for example, the Assassin rules in 8th edition 40k were White Dwarf only. Some of the Harlequin rules were White Dwarf only. And I don't like it. I don't like having to buy a White Dwarf magazine and carrying that around as a rules pack. But it is what it is, that's what they've done, and I would rather have Maelstrom of War in White Dwarf than Mo no Maelstrom of War at all. I'm much, much happier that we have it as an official way of playing rather than absolutely no option to play Maelstrom. It's interesting because some of you may know that I complained about Maelstrom of War in 8th edition and I thought perhaps it added a, a, a sort of degree of imbalance because it would ask you to do things that just were ridiculous and then it got better when chapter approval was released and you could remove a certain number of Maelstrom of War cards from your deck and slim that deck down so that you could remove some of the ones that were impossible for you and some of the ones you couldn't do. On the whole, we tended to house rule the fact that if it was physically impossible to do at any point in the battle, we would get rid of that card anyway. But they did improve that, and I'm hoping that to some extent the new Maelstrom of War takes some of that into consideration. But actually what I found as someone who plays regularly and has narrated for a long time battle reports, Maelstrom of War does make that job of narrating battle reports and, and giving you that story a little bit easier. So I'm really excited that it is coming back because it, it comes away from that mundane. And I think to some extent you can play the same Maelstrom of War mission five, six times in a row, the same mission, and you can have various different types of games, even if you're playing the same mission with the same armies, just because of the cards you're drawing. So Winters and I tended to default, if needed, in 8th edition to, um, is it Cleanse and Capture, I think it used to be called. So it's three cards a turn, every turn, really simple, really, really easy. And we could play the same game of Cleanse and Capture multiple times with the same armies and have various different results in how that game would go and how that match would play out and what story was told which is really, really good, and that's why I'm really excited about Master of War. So what's the bottom line to this video? Well, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is if you want to know what direction Games Workshop are going to go in, you should probably watch this channel, I guess. Because as you've seen, just from the few minutes I've been on the screen so far, everything I've asked for so far has happened. So maybe I should create a wish list. <laughs> I don't, maybe. Um... I'm really sorry I couldn't bring you the Codex preview for Dark Angels today. The Death Guard one was popular um, that we did. The De Dark Angels preview that I did most recently was insanely popular. So thank you so much for all your support on that video. I'm really sorry I couldn't bring you that. But Games Workshop have got problems with uh, dispatching these things and getting them out to people because of COVID and because of Brexit and because of high demand and all that kind of stuff that's going on. I understand. And they've like I said, they've apologised. But it is super interesting the direction they've gone. And I do wonder if the rule around Ravenwing and Deathwing sets a precedent for the rest of the 9th edition codexes. I get specifically excited, for example, about Simhan and Elder. And the fact that perhaps, possibly, maybe, if I'm really, really lucky, Simhan and Windriders may become objective secured in the same way that Outriders have in Outriders Attachments. I say Outriders... Outriders or biker units have an Outriders attachments for the Dark Angels. Um, and then if your Warlord is in that Outrider attachment, you can refund the same three command points. I'm hoping that happens. I'm really, really hoping that happens. Maybe they do the same for Eandon and Wraith Constructs. Perhaps we go to other armies and perhaps Orcs might better use Killer Cans in a mech list or something. I don't know. I don't know how it would look for other forces in, in too much detail. But there's plenty of, of opportunity for there to be more narrative-focused lists in Ninth Edition. And it does excite me that Games Workshop seem to be going down this route about encouraging narrative types of lists and fluffy lists. And, and to be clear as well, the Dark Angel's choices around uh, Ravenwing becoming objective secured and Deathwing, it's not just fluffy and narrative, it's actually very, very strong. Really, really strong. Don't forget that biker and outrider units in an outrider detachment that is pure Ravenwing get objective secured. So you can now have objective secured Black Knights, you can have objective secured outriders. That's it's really good. Uh, it's insanely strong. So not only is it a narrative choice, but you're not really being penalised for taking it necessarily. You can't mix other units in that particular detachment, but you can take another detachment, and that does cost you the points. 
but it's okay because at least you can get this one refunded if your warlord's in it, or you can choose to get your warlord in another detachment and have that one refunded. Key is, if you want to go soul Ravenwing, you're not penalised because you're not taking a battalion, which was kind of what I think sucked a little bit in Eighth Edition. Is you were penalised for not going for for going pure Ravenwing because you'd just be spending command points. You weren't even spending command points, sorry. You would generate command points if you had outright attachments in 8th edition, and you'd get 5 or 6 if you were lucky, and you had to really squeeze loads of units into multiple attachments to do that. So I'm super excited about the future. I really, really hope this is a sign of things to come. Thumbs up, Games Workshop. I'm super excited about Maelstrom. That's great. Thumbs up, Games Workshop. I do, do, do really hope that this White Dwarf release is maybe a temporary fix, perhaps because they've seen a bit of stagnation, and I question how much this has been done in advance and how much this is a reaction to the current state of Ninth edition and, and what some of the sort of general feeling in the community is. And I hope that maybe there's a more formal rule book that comes up around or comes out around Maelstrom and different ways of playing. Perhaps it's in a chapter approved. I don't know. I just hope it doesn't stay a White Dwarf. I will, however, be picking up that copy of White Dwarf and I haven't had White Dwarf in years because I just don't personally feel like I get the value from it. And now I'm going to buy that magazine because I want those rules I want to be able to play Maelstrom of War, and I'm super excited about that for 9th edition. So the last thing for me in this video is to say welcome to all of the new subscribers to the channel. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button. YouTube does tell me that sort of 50% of my viewers are still not subscribers. So if you want to help me out, just go down and hit that little red button. It costs you nothing. It makes me feel really powerful. Who doesn't want to feel really powerful? Go and hit that button. Hit subscribe. Thanks very much. Other ways of supporting the channel, you can head on over to www.deploymentzone.tv, subscribe to the website there at a measly cost of £6 a month, and you get lots and lots and lots of video content. I do another Talking Heads video every single Friday on DZTV. Winters tends to put out a bat report every single Tuesday on DZTV. We've got other type podcasty type things going on, and there's vlogs and tutorials, and there's something super, super, super exciting coming in March, and it's February so strictly I probably could tell you because we had to wait till February but I'm not going to tell you before I've told the guys in DZTV so if you want to get an early look at what that thing is you need to subscribe to DZTV for that and Winters and I are doing a sit and talk on Saturday coming that will then go into DZTV and announce this massively fancy exciting new thing that's happening. So you need to be a subscriber to be part of that. Additionally, you can hit the link below to go to Element Games, who are our sponsors, and it's an affiliate link, and it lets them know you came for us, and we get a little kickback for all purchases that you made from Element Games, which is amazing. We now have started to create our very own web store within Element Games, and there's a link right below this for Deployment Zone TV Dice, because they are now back in stock, and we've waited forever, and we now have 15,000. I say we have 15,000 in stock. We don't have 15,000 in stock, because we've sold loads already. We've sold tons already. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of dice already. So if you want to get your hands on some deploymentzone.tv dice, hit the element link below. Go to the DZ part of the web store. That link will take you straight there and place your order with Element Games. And in the meantime, you can pick up some glue and some paints and maybe some models. Uh, if you are in America, you'll know that Element Games can't ship 40k products. Actually, they can't ship Games Workshop products to, to the US, but they can ship everything else. They can ship Artis Opus brushes. They can ship uh, airbrushes. They can ship... Vallejo paints, they can ship deploymentzone.tv dice to America. That's four reasons there to go to America. To go to America, I mean, go to America, seems like a nice place. But there's four reasons there to go to Element Games and place a order with them and get yourself uh, your hands. Get yourself your hands? Don't get yourself your hands. You should have those anyway, but get your hands on some DZTV dice. I think that's every... Oh, there's also a discount code below for 20% off all products in the Beard Struggle, and I'm going to be putting a giveaway together soon, so... I'll be using qualifying purchases, so chuck yourself in there, get yourself a, a couple of new beard care products, and this is messy today, don't look at this one, it's nothing like it's nothing like what you could do if you had beard struggle products. Um, when I do finally get my hands on the Dark Angels Codex, and because I'm making this video today, I'm expecting it to turn up tomorrow when this video goes live, and that'll just be a kick in the nuts. However, I will then next week do a Dark Angels Codex review, in the same format that I did the Death Guard one, it's just it won't be news to you because you'll already be able to have your own hands on it. But such is life. Such is life in this COVID apocalyptic type world. <sighs> Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.